What's up everybody? It's Cameron Johnson here. I wanted to go through my amp collection. This will be the very first vlog style video. This will be a lot of fun just to kind of talk about the amps I have and why I bought them, maybe kind of how I acquired them. And uh, just expect me to do an individual review coming up uh, pretty soon. So I'm gonna try to do a, a demo of each and every one. So this is just sort of like a brief overview of uh, the amps I have. So we'll start with the first one pictured here. This is my Mesa Boogie Mark II C+. This amp needs no introduction. I guess kind of made famous most by uh, John Petrucci of Dream Theater, but that's at least where I heard about it. But this guy is just a very versatile amp. I actually traded a, a, a diesel VH4, so a pretty expensive amp. I traded it for this guy, and I'm, I'm very excited with that trade. I have had it for a few years now, and really you can get a lot of a lot of great tones out of it. Out of it, the effects loop works great, but I I think uh, I prefer it in a studio setting versus a live setting. I just prefer the feel of Marshalls for live mostly, um, but uh, this amp is just great in studio. And there's my Boss RPS10 pitch shifter delay on top because I like to use that for delay in the studio, I guess, but. We'll go down from there. This is my Matchless uh, HC30. It's the head version of um, that famous Matchless amp, the C30 design. This is a more recent one, I think, in the last 10 years or so. But uh, just a classic amp. The closest I have to a, like an AC30, Vox AC30 style amplifier. I traded a... What did I trade for this guy? I think I traded a... Um, Bogner Ecstasy Classic for it. One of those situations where I was just obsessed with that Ecstasy Classic, and then I got it and it was okay, and then I, you know, I, I kind of made an offer for this one and it worked out perfectly. And I'm, this is sort of like a permanent amp now because it's, it's the only amp I have that does that sort of that style. So they're pretty expensive, um, but uh, they're extremely well made. So that's my Matchless H30. Uh, all right, so below that, one of my most, I don't know, I guess it's uh, rare, rarer amps, if I can, <coughs> pardon me, if I can even say that correctly. This is my Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. What makes this one special, it's it's the the number, uh, it's serial number 98, so it's uh, the very first revision released to, the pu released to the public, which is the revision C. It's uh, very very much different than the later revisions in the sense that it's a lot tighter and has a lot more high end which is you know more much more pleasing to me and much more usable to me the clean channel is terrible it's almost unusual unusable but you don't have you don't buy this amp for clean so another one of those amps that i keep in the studio just because it does what it does so well i still like to put a boost pedal in front of it just to kind of uh, eliminate that low end the excessive low end but um one of those ones I'll probably never sell, so there you go. Mesa Boogie, uh, Dual Rectifier, re Revision C, Serial Number 98. Okay, so we'll go up top here. We're in the Marshall territory now. Here's my my Guardians of the Amps. I'm not sure if people stay, but they look cool. I love uh, anything related to Alien, Predator, well, almost anything. Aliens. Funny thing, I don't own a Marshall Jubilee, I used to, but this is, this is the original sort of dealer flag on, you know, one of those Craig, or not Craigslist, Reverb.com purchases. Okay, this is my Marshall JMP uh, 1972, I guess that's the year. The model is a 1987, which is the 50 watt designation. This is the last year they hand wire the amplifiers. So this is, this is from the year 1972, not to be confused when I say 1987, that's the model. This is the, this actually has a ton of gain for uh, a plexi style amp. This is te technically a plexi, I guess, circuit. Um, it is a metal panel, but you know, it's just it gets a little. You get kind of in the weeds with all those sort of pop, uh, Marshall pop culture terminology. But um, just an amazing sounding amp. I bought this. I was intending to buy a guitar and I sold a bunch of guitars and I ended up finding this on a, on a forum and I snagged it and don't regret it at all. It's, it's like the quintessential classic rock 70s rock amp. 
you know, all your 38 special riffs will sound excellent, as will your Scorpions and Michael Schenker, anything like that. This is the amp for you. And I got this, uh, like I said, I got this from a guy on a forum. It actually arrived, uh, I think it had some issues in shipping. Had to get it fixed, uh, but it works great now, and I don't regret that purchase one bit. So below that, this is my Marshall. This is another, another JMP, although it's a late 70s version. So this is when they uh, got to the went to the master volume circuit. So this is the 2203, and this later became the JCM 800 2203, but this is the JMP version of it, so different aesthetics. This one was modified by Dave Friedman. I've had it for, boy, almost maybe, when did I get this? So maybe about six years now. But uh, it has the kitchen sink, so the BE, HBE, uh, has a clean channel, pretty much everything you'd ever want in a modded Marshall. It sounds super refined. It's like the most refined Marshall you'll ever play. Plus, it you know uses the original Marshall transformer, so I think it's kind of the best of both worlds. So he essentially gutted the preamp and then used uh, the, the original transformer, so you kind of still get some you know some of that Marshallness in here with his uh, you know of course his revisions, etc. It sounds great. It's had to go in the shop a few times, uh, but um, other than that, it, when it works, it sounds amazing. So let's go below it. So here's a, a speaking of JMPs. Here's another one. This is a a 2204, which is the 50 watt late 70s JMP. I think it was. Oh yeah, it's totally unmodified. So I wanted something. I wanted a JMP without any modifications. A 2204 to be specific, just to have in the studio. And this is just a great example of, of uh, the 2204 in great condition. I got this on Reverb right when these were kind of going for more than I initially paid. You used to be able to get these for around a grand, but now they're up to 16 to 18. People are asking a lot for these since these are such great amps. But no effects loop. This is just your, you know, you plug it in with a, probably a, some sort of boost pedal or SD1, Boss SD1, something like that, and it'll just sound... It'll sound like a great Marshall should. So there's my unmodified Marshall JMP. We've got a couple more amps for you. Speaking of Marshall, this is one I recently profiled or I demoed on my uh, my first sort of amp demo of my updated channel. This is another Marshall um, 2204, 50 watts. You guys can check out the demo, which I just posted, but just a great amp. It's actually a lot less, there's a lot less volume to this one for some strange reason. I guess because of the, the effects loop, they added an effects loop, which you can bypass. But it's tube driven, so maybe that affects something, I don't know. Anyway, it sounds great. It's perfect for home use and live because it's not as loud as the other ones. So this one stays in the sort of, the amps I can play in the room without killing my ears section. So there's that guy. And then finally, here's my diesel Big Mac. So this one, as soon as I saw this at the NAMM show, um, on one of the premier guitar videos, I knew this was one I'd want to check out, but this is a, I think it's about 60, 50 to 60 watts. I believe there are KT, either 66s or 88s in it, two of those. But this is kind of like Mar or Diesel's equivalent of a 2204, with a couple of updates. It, it sounds like a diesel, obviously, but you have the high and low input, which I like. Single channel. It adds a deep control and a bright switch, um, and of course a master volume. But uh, it has its own thing kind of going on. It's definitely not like a Marshall. It's a lot thicker than a Marshall. I tend to, I think it sounds best with a pedal. It's, re it's really made to, to use pedals with. And it has an excellent effects loop that it's super transparent. So there's my diesel Big Max. And then for cabinets, I'm a Port City guy. I don't, you know, so this is my 212 Port City. Got this on Reverb. Um, and it came pretty much, uh, dest not destroyed, but no packing. So, as you can see, the corners are a little iffy. And that, that was not from gigging. That was from shipping, unfortunately. So, pack your pack your, pack your cabinets well, everybody. <laughs> and then here, my two 112 setup. Port City 112s. And then my 412 has seen better days. It was it, it was once Dusty Wearings from um, Between the Barity Me's. I picked it up at actually the guy who owns Port City. Picked it up at his, his parents' house in Winston-Salem, um, where I used to live. 
and it's a really nice 412. My other 412 is a Marshall that, that kind of hangs out at a studio I'm involved in, so I don't really have room at home. So, and of course the famous Castle Grayskull to make sure everything is on the up and up. So, here's the pedal board, and uh, yeah, so there's my my live setup. I mean, I don't bring all these cabinets live. I'd probably just choose either this setup. Or this one, if I was going to take anything out for a gig or, or something like that. So, All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again pretty soon with another video. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I want to encourage you to please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Please follow me on Instagram. Please follow me on Facebook. All that stuff is going to be in the description. If you don't, this guy's going to get you.